Good morning, everybody. Um, I think we'll make a start and hopefully some latecomers might join us. So thank you very much for coming to this session on opportunities offered by hydrogen in the maritime sector. Uh, my name is Jennifer Ramsey. I will be chairing this session for you today on behalf of Bretagne Développement Innovation. Uh, Bretagne Dé Développement Innovation is a local agency supporting companies uh, in the sectors of development and innovation. And this session today is delivered under the program of Bretagne Hydrogène Renouvelable. So a program focused on supporting hydrogen development. Just to be aware that today's session is being recorded. Um, so any questions that are asked will be recorded. And of course, make sure that your phones are all switched to silent. Uh, so of course, it's a really exciting time in the hydrogen sector as we're seeing acceleration towards carbon neutrality and seeing all the opportunities that hydrogen is presenting to deal with the various different transitions that we are facing, environmental, economic, social, and the various crises that that presents as well. Uh, the hydrogen projects that we are seeing to start to develop, of course, require a mix of cutting edge research, innovation, investment, and public sector in infrastructure, and that real commitment at a political level. And so by nature, these projects which require partnership, collaboration, and integration of numerous technologies are particularly complex, and that's perhaps what makes them so exciting and have such potential. Here in Brittany, hydrogen has been a key area of focus for a number of years, and the Brittany region has been working since 2017 on a strategic plan to implement hydrogen on a number of key areas, notably maritime industries, which we'll be hearing about today. With over 2,700 kilometres of coast, Brittany holds a third of France's mainland coastline, and around 40% of Brittany's region live in coastal regions which of course highlights the need for immediate and urgent action in the face of climate change. The region also has 22 harbours and fishing ports and supplies 35% of France's sea fishing. So the opportunities for activity, development and innovation in the maritime sector are of course extremely vast. Finally, let us not forget Brittany's strong cultural identity, which is a region not afraid to innovate and to do things differently throughout history. So with all this in mind, it's no surprise that the region is home to some fantastic hydrogen projects, innovating, doing things differently, and particularly in the maritime space, looking at how we can use technologies to move things forward and to respond to the various crises we are facing. We're lucky enough today to be joined by three speakers who will share their projects and perspectives with us. Our first speaker, Yannick Bion of South Brittany Naval Shipyard, uh, will share the shipbuilding projects that they are working on and their approaches to the different use cases. We'll then hear from Adrian Guillaume of Lorient Agglomeration and Olivier Ticos of Alcatorda as we take a step back to think more about the ecosystems, the partnerships and collaborations necessary to make these projects a success. Uh, we have a bit of time today, so please take the opportunity to ask any questions. We'll have some time at the end to bring the speakers together have a bit of a discussion, and we'll open the floor to any questions that you might have. So please, please, please feel free to take that opportunity and engage with our speakers. But without any further ado, let's hear from Yannick Bion of South Brittany Naval Shipyard. And I will pass over to you. Hello, everybody. Um, so just a very short presentation of uh, what we do in our uh, shipyard. Uh, you, 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 you. Just, um, just a view of uh, our shipyard. We have different projects. Uh, it's an uh, electric boat on um, on the right part, and uh, on manned surface vehicle on the fore part. You, the different projects in the shipyard. Um, just, we will detail the four projects. Uh, all are green ships. It's uh, electric boat, uh, uh, hydrogen ready. And um, uh, I will make focus on each uh, part of uh, each project. Uh, so f first of all, um, it's um, in France Relance Program. We we get the contract to to build a prototype of uh, oyster barge uh, with um, electric propulsion, and uh, uh, she has to be to be ready for hydrogen. So. Um, the customer is a regional shellfish farming and committee for Brittany, uh, South Brittany, CRC, CRC. 
there are four objectives. It's uh, to enhance uh, sustain, sustainable development within the sector, uh, decarbonize, of course, the oyster farming activity, uh, uh, to preserve the environment, and also to demonstrate the feasibility and sensitive the actors to, to, to use electric propulsion for uh, such, uh, such boats. Uh, um, in this project, so we, we have um, uh, production of uh, renewable energy, solar panels, wind turbines, and also battery storage. Uh, to, to, to have um, three hours of uh, autonomy range uh, in different uh, speeds. Uh, the dimensions, uh, it's under 12 meters and uh, around um, 2.7 uh, meters for width and uh, we are around 12 tons. So it's um, uh, it's it's a very standard oyster barge, uh, just to, 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 to fulfill all the criteria of uh, operational uh, point of view. So, uh, so the, the, the aim is also, it's mainly to, um, to, produce, to produce energy and also to have electric barge. Uh, le, for us, it's... Uh, ambitious and innovative project uh, because um, it's ready to develop a shipbuilding industry for electric oyster barge. So we, we will um, we'll go to, to, to trials with uh, a lot of professionals from uh, oyster, oyster farm. Uh, we, we, we had to test the latest technological uh, innovation from batteries and from uh, engines, electric engines. Uh, so yeah, we we are very proud to to promote Britain innovation here, and also to to develop uh, local and uh, European partnership because we we have also European project in the in the shipyard. Uh, the second one, it's um, it's not only uh, oyster barge, it's uh, it's more to. Uh, to address to address uh, farming in um, as a global a global criteria, we we would like in fact to um, to have to study uh, mobility and electricity solution for um, for oyster farmers in the Etel Ria. We we show the different partners uh, we 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 have uh, in this project. Uh, from uh, yeah, from uh, it's financed by uh, by European. Th there is uh, three phases uh, during one year. It's a, it's uh, what I said. It's a global approach. So uh, during the f phase one, we we do the definition of the energy needs uh, of all the oyster farms and also solar and uh, also potential. <laughs> wind and tidal uh, available near the farms. Uh, it, it, was, um, it was a big job because we, we spent uh, more than six months to, to, to do, to do um, all the interview and um, to build a real uh, strategy for, for them, for oyster farmers. Le, the second phase is, phase, phase is to, to, build, uh, to build a demonstrator. So um, I have new, new pictures. It's uh, almost finished at this time. Uh, we, we do a sm smaller um, oyster barge. And um, the, the, the idea is to, um, to fit a pontoon with... Um, uh, hydro tire, hydro uh, turbine. Uh, what we we see in the red part, and um, also with solar panels. The, the idea is to to be autonomous for uh, oyster farmers. And uh, the third project, uh, it's also uh, a France Relance program. Uh, from uh, Lycée Maritime et Aquacole d'Etel. Uh, 
it's um innovative project because we it because we have also uh it's more or less electric there is a thermic motor but for uh just high high speed um and yeah the 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 the, the three points is to provide um, a training vessel for the students and to to get um, to get a bit of uh, new new technologies like solar panels electric engines and so on um to improve the carbon footprint of the profession and also to test the latest technological innovation for students uh, the building starting in two weeks now uh, so more or less at um, in june or in september next september uh, the, the the vessel will be finished So it's uh, yes, unit of uh, less than twelve meters and uh, five meters of width, parallel uh, hybrid propulsion, thermal and electric. We are also uh, they are also asking for uh, uh, hydrogen ready. Uh, we we get three hours of electric autonomy at five knots. Uh, a lot of training of manu maneuvers uh, in the rear detail. We have also solar panels and uh, wind wind turbine. Um, the it's another project. It's uh, uh, what we call the Monaco project. It's to design and um, and and build electric catamaran for the youth club of Monaco. Uh, there is. Um, uh, it's to it's for accompanying regattas and also uh, uh, also observation of uh, cetaceans and uh, and uh, and whales also. Uh, it's in direct collaboration with the hydrogen ecosystem because in the next step it will be uh, fitted with um, hydrogen uh, fuel cell. Um, and yeah, the, the the aim of uh, our customer is to 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 go to zero carbon emissions. The the, the last project we we have um, in uh, in our shipyard, what we called Archinote project. It's a rotating sail electrical catamaran. Um, the the objective is to to be. Um, Autonomous for uh, electric production and also sailing, so it's also uh, 12 meters long, less than 12 meters long, six meters width due to due to for stability criteria, and uh, and um, the, the the objective is to characterize characterize the energy independence uh, due to wind turbine and. Uh, uh, also, it's uh, wind, um, it's uh, electric energy for uh, for power. Uh, so yeah, uh, it's a very um, ambitious project. So in maybe in three months we will be we'll go at sea to to try everything. So yes, it's my last slide. <laughs> I'm uh, happy if you have questions for all this project. Uh, if I can just perhaps ask uh, just a bit more detail on a couple of the projects. On the Oyster projects, how did that project come around? How did it start? Was it a request from the Oyster farmers or what was the the motivation behind the project? Um, the, um, uh, at this time, it's almost finished. We, we are looking for the navigation authorization of, with the flag authority and also with classification society. So we we uh, I guess in one month it will be okay. So it's um, just to 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 give an overview of date now for the, this project, and the the motivation are uh, the are for oyster farmers are to to have clean water to have um, very decarbonized uh, uh, decarbonized um, yeah sailing and and. They are very, very uh, attractive in uh, in uh, quality of the environment. So they they go on uh, on this subject to to try 
to to be able to uh, to sail with uh, electric boats in uh, I guess in few months. So was it the the farmers who came to you yeah. with the request? Yeah, yeah. but um, at the end it was uh, the farmers comes to to our shipyard, but we discussed with them during several years to to that um, is is um, technology are now uh, in the market or not. So we we push we push, but at the end the, the oyster farmers comes to us and uh, go to this solution. Yeah. So how how long has the project been in development? Um, we we get the contract uh, in November uh, 21, and um, it will be presented. Uh, uh, it will be commissioning in uh, yeah in one month, okay. two weeks or one month. And when did you start the conversations? Ah, <laughs> four years ago. Okay. Okay. Great. Right. Um, and on the YCM project, you mentioned the hydrogen yeah. ecosystem uh, a little bit. Could you tell us a, a bit more about the, the context for that project and the, the hydrogen ecosystem in place? Um, n now it's an um, electric boat uh, with um, battery and uh, inboard engines. And we, we go to f uh, s uh, s uh, 34 kilograms of hydrogen on board and the fuel sales of um, 100 uh, kilowatts now. So it's a, it's a project with um, a lot of phases because uh, due to hydrogen disponibility and, uh, uh, and other, um, yeah, other technical points we, we, we get with the project. And are you working with a number of local partners there? Uh, with um, a lot of local partners, but for uh, for 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 the uh, in the supply chain, we have local and also international partners. Um, and across the different projects that you've talked about, is there any recurring issues? Do you see anything as a particularly recurring problem? <laughs> uh, recurring problem is um, is to is to be able to 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 work with uh, flag flag um, uh, flag authority and uh, and also with classification society because we are not doing prototype not prototype it's a professional use so we we have. To, to we have to go very deeply in uh, in the rules and regulations to, to 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 be able at the end to get a navigation authorization, sailing authorization. Yeah. Alain Marianne from Dassault System. Uh, I have a question about uh, how uh, do you uh, build your uh, your boat, and especially uh, especially about the the design phase because I think you you are explaining that you are doing uh, some interviews to collect all the uh, inputs from uh, from the farm from the user and then from that you are building your solution uh, what about the uh, digital twins and uh, also what about the uh, the uh, modelization for the system uh, for multi model based system engineering for instance which kind of solution are you using matlab simulink or other solutions uh, for for each project we have a digital twin because um, uh, a lot of uh, uh, everything is um, is designed in uh, in a tool uh, for uh, we use matlab system for for to simulate uh, uh, electric um, uh, yeah for for electricity matlab and um, we 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 are now looking for new solutions because we 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 are uh, we are really at less less than twelve meters, but we are now uh, going to uh, big ships. So yeah, we are looking for better tools. <laughs> So we'll now move on to uh, thinking more about the ecosystems, thinking about the wider context for hydrogen projects. And we'll hear from Adrien Guillaume from Lorient Agglomeration. Good morning. Um, so yes, um, I will explain you uh, the vision of Lorient Agglomeration. Firstly, I will do a quick presentation of uh, Lorient Agglomeration. And after, I will explain the establishment of uh, a um, hydrogen ecosystem and the six items uh, from uh, this uh, ID for uh, Lorient Agglomeration. So Lorient Agglomeration, 25 municipalities in the uh, Morbihan department, so in Brittany, and has about uh, 210,000 residents. In uh, 2018, Lor uh, Lorient Agglomeration adopted a territorial climate, air and energy plan 
And just to tell you some numbers, 37% of the greenhouse gas emissions are from the transport field. Uh, so every transport uh, uses uh, by car, individual cars, trucks, buses, ships, taxis. And to be more pre, uh, to to give you some details, eight thousand and five hundred ton of CO2 in 2021 were from bus and ships activities on the territory. Uh, so from these uh, two major targets, uh, the first one, establishment of an hydrogen ecosystem, and I will explain you how uh, Lorient Agglomeration wants and is doing, wants to do and is doing, and uh, carbon-free mobility, specifically on buses and uh, ships. So, for the hydrogen ecosystem, six items, production, distribution, research and development, industrial development, academic training and uses. And I wrote green hydrogen because everything is uh, thinking around uh, green hydrogen. So, I will explain every item. So, the first one, production. The first step is the creation of an electrolyzer less than 100 kilometers from our future station. Um, Lorient Agglomeration uh, wants to uh, transform its uh, bus and ship fleet. Uh, every, um, every buses and every ships today are uh, diesel motorization. And the, the ambition is to transform it uh, with uh, bio CNG and hydrogen. And for hydrogen, uh, if you want to use uh, hydrogen motorization, you need stations and uh, hydrogen to supply uh, this station. So there is a project in uh, Bulleon municipality, so uh, in Morbihan, less than 100 kilometers uh, from our future stations. I will explain you where will be the stations. 100% of green hydrogen and uh, the first uh, use will be for the public transport and after for more, uh, we hope. The second item, academic training. Uh, so, um, University Southern Brittany. So, we, we are supporting and speaking with uh, our school on the territory. So, uh, Technical Institute University and NCBS Engineer School. So, for example, since September 2021, there is a professional bachelor's degree in energy management, electricity, sustainable development, with an option managing of new energy and hydrogen. So this is for the technical uh, institute and in progress at the next, the target is at the next uh, September 2023 at NCBS, a future engineering degree in hydrogen and renewable energy. Uh, so this is in uh, progress, in discussion with uh, CTI at this moment, uh, commercial of uh, engineers' uh, titles. And the target is to develop skills in the territory. Uh, actually, in Lorient Agglomeration, there is uh, some competencies on the territory uh, about hydrogen, but the target is to multiply them. And we will need technical competencies and engineers' uh, competencies to make this hydrogen uh, ecosystem uh, in, the, in the time. Okay, the third and the fourth items are pretty close. So research and development, industrial development. Uh, Lorient Agglomeration is keen to support investment companies in the hydrogen sector. Um, so I give you two examples of uh, companies on the territory, Coriolis Composites. Uh, so develops a range of machines for thermoplastic composite and equipment for the automotive industry dedicated to hydrogen tanks. So they are thinking of hydrogen tanks, uh, future hydrogen, uh, hydrogen tanks. And Zephyr et Boré, uh, they are working uh, on the decarbonization of the maritime sector including with hydrogen solutions. So two companies on the territory supporting by uh, Lorient Agglomeration in their actions uh, and research. And um, there is a project of a, techno -campus, a hydrogen technocampus at Plumeur. 
So this project is uh, from UBS, so the new university, and it's to build uh, skills uh, in the territory. So support the companies who are investing in hydrogen and doing uh, research, and uh, yes, do some research on uh, storage, hydrogen, motorization, and uh, everything like that. About the uses now, so um, I did this part in two parts. Uh, so the first one on road basis. So I told you, uh, Lorient Agglomeration, the Lorient Agglomeration's ambition is to transform its uh, bus fleet. So um, Lorient Agglomeration owned 100 buses, and the target is to replace with uh, bio CNG 80%. Bio CNG from a production, a local production in Azazak Locrist municipality. And hydrogen uh, buses 20% gradually until 2030. So the first uh, bio CNG buses uh, arrived next, uh, last week, sorry. Uh, and it, in parallel, there is a creation of two biogas stations and one hydrogen station on the bus depot of Kevin and Lorient to refuel our uh, buses. So at this time in the territory, there is already a station, um, gas station in, at Codan, and the buses uh, go to this station uh, at this time to refuel. And uh, I just give you some, uh, some dates. Uh, the first uh, bio CNG station on our depot bus uh, will be operational on May 2023. And uh, after that, the first uh, part of hydrogen station will be oper operational summer 2023 because our uh, first buses uh, will arrive. Next summer 2023, we ordered seven bus uh, to Vanul. So this is on. And the second, the, it will be a second uh, bio CNG station on our, lip, our Lorient depot to refuel uh, the full uh, buses uh, fleet. And after that, uh, in parallel, um, you've got maritime panel. So Lorient Agglomeration is the owner of six passenger ships. Uh, it's about uh, 1 million trips per year. So today, uh, every ship is diesel, and the target is to, to replace the ship fleet step by step with carbon-free emissions motorization. And uh, the first step uh, is a hydrogen ship by 2025 and a hydrogen refueling station on the jet left uh, shore of the scorf, so at uh, Lanester. Uh, this station will be in constru construction. Just to give you some more details about the, the ship, so this is in a, actually in discussion, so uh, don't wait the picture. Uh, I don't have it uh, yet. Uh, so this is some characteristics required for the ship. And um, it's a um, global uh, Global. Um, we we are looking for a global contract, uh, two parts: construction and maintenance. Maintenance for 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 the next ten years, uh, and we are looking to award uh, the contract before the end of uh, 2022, before the end of uh, of the year. To uh, to get the first ship on the bay on 2025, so a ship uh, hydrogen hydrogen ship. And we are looking for uh, maybe uh, another one, and we call it the sister ship. And uh, after these two first uses on the bay, uh, we look for some additional uses. We gradually come with wind farm maintenance vessel, for example, with another project uh, on the on the on Lorient Agglomeration. And just to to finish with the distribution panel. So there is um, the project of a refueling station, hydrogen refueling station on the left shore of the Scorf at Lanester. So uh, Morbihan Energy, as part of an, an opportunity study carried out by Morbihan Energy, the sector on the left shore of the Scorf, Lanester, has been identified as having the best potential for hosting an hydrogen distribution station for maritime use 
and scale from the Bay of Lorient. So the target is to get the station operational before the first ship. So uh, at the end of uh, 2024, and um, it's the same um, the same uh, company who will uh, build this station and the on road station on our uh, bus depot, and it's high go. And that's it for me. Thank you. Great, thank you very much. Um, can I maybe ask just about the six ships? You mentioned you have the six passenger ships. Yeah. Um, can you tell us a bit more? Are the um, six ships the same? Do, do they have the same journeys? Can you tell us a bit more about the type of yeah, ships that they have? Uh, yeah, at this time, the six ships are pretty uh, close, but uh, different. Uh, so Lorient Agglomeration owned these six, six ships. Uh, and it's a value for the future because we can drive the transformation of these ships uh, how we, we want to drive it. Uh, so the six ships are affected uh, by a line, uh, like a bus, uh, on the bay, uh, Lorient Agglomeration Bay. And uh, at this time, four of them are doing uh, the, 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 the most of the lines. Uh, and the, yes, the, the, the target is to um, to replace uh, re replace some ships who are uh, in the uh, end of their life uh, with uh, future ships uh, with uh, decarbonize, decarbonization motorization, free carbon motorization, so by uh, by hydrogen. So they're they're all deployed on quite short trips, or sort of regular yeah. short trips. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, like a bus. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. yeah. Okay. Mm. Um, and maybe just it might be interesting to tell us a little bit more about the contract that you're currently looking to award, and the, the con construction and maintenance contract. Yeah, yeah. Um, Lorient Agglomeration doesn't got the, the, the competence uh, to drive a hydrogen, uh, hydrogen ship uh, project. So uh, we need to be a uh, support uh, in, this, uh, in this project. So um, the, um, the contract is... Um, is to to give the key uh, for the, the companies, uh, so the, the yeah they they will get the conception the construction and after they they have to 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 keep uh, this ship operational during ten years. So this is um, this is to 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 be sure for Lorient Agglomeration. Uh, Lorient Agglomeration has uh, this ambition. Uh, but don't have the competencies, so uh, uh, we trust in companies uh, to do this uh, because uh, companies has got the, the competencies to to build uh, ships uh, and hydrogen ships. So uh, we we give them the key for the, the the ten years for for these ships. So you're looking for applications at the moment. You're accepting tenders from companies now until the end of yeah. the year. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So if anybody's interested, they can speak to you perhaps to find out more information about that contract? Uh, yes. Yeah. But we, yeah. <laughs> Just in case anyone in the room... The, the tender is on. So, okay. uh, yeah, it's, 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 in it's the really public domain. We, we are... Uh, we, we, um, we received the candidates and uh, the, the, the process is on. Are you still accepting candidates? Uh, no. Ah, okay. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. Um, and maybe just a more general question. You were talking about the passenger ships and passenger buses. Yeah. Have you worked much with the, the public and seen the public perception of hydrogen projects? Yeah, it's a, it's a global question. Like, um, yes, Lorient Agglomeration amb ambition is to transform the, the, the bus fleet. But uh, when we are talking about uh, ecosystem, we have a, we have a, a pedagogic to, um, way to do like um, explain our choices, uh, explain uh, why we are going to hydrogen solutions. So yes, we are um, speaking, uh, talking about hydrogen uh, in every moment we can. Uh, so, but we, we, we have to keep this uh, language and to, to make, uh, make it easy to understand uh, for the for the Lorient agglomeration populations and uh, and yes there is a, a Lorient agglomeration population users and after you you will get uh, also the 
the drivers uh, of uh, the, these buses, the mechanics. So it's a global uh, discussion and to, um, to explain our choices and uh, why uh, we want to do it. And uh, yeah, you, ha you have to involve the, everyone involved. Everyone and how are you finding that response so far? Are people open to the technology? Yeah, 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 yeah. People are open. And um, yeah, the first uh, CNG buses just arrived last week. And uh, uh, new design, uh, new energy, and explaining uh, the, the bio CNG come from, as the Clocris, from uh, uh, the waste of Lorient agglomération. You, you've, got, uh, you've got a logic, uh, and yeah, it's the uh, most understanding uh, at this time. Yeah, great, yeah. thank you. <laughs> Do we have any questions for the Lorient agglomération? Just let us know who you are and where you're from. Uh, hi, I'm uh, Quentin uh, Genet. I'm from the UBS. I'm a student there. Um, I just have a, a question. You are talking about uh, public uh, transport. Um, and uh, what about the private or um, public trans um, yeah. private transport or professional transport? Yeah. Do you plan to offer the po opportunity to uh, people to use <coughs> the, um, uh, the hydrogen station mm. or things like this? Uh, yeah, good question. This, this. Uh, thank you for the question. This, uh, this stations on the uh, depot, bus depot will be uh, just for the buses, but we are looking to build uh, a public hydrogen uh, station. We don't know where yet. We have to um, to um, to get some uh, return of uh, uses before thinking about the station. Uh, so uh, we are working with uh, with uh, Haigo in this subject to 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 make uh, this station uh, uh, to make this public station in the future uh, and with uh, industrial uh, also yes it's uh, we the first step is this like public transport but we really want to. To, to make an ecosystem, so to involve the uh, industrials and private uh, sectors for long agglomeration. Thank you for the question. Do we have any other questions for... Uh, Sabri Kloilek and Solnexia Group. Um, I have a question about the production of the hydrogen. You talked about green hydrogen, but I didn't catch uh, how did you produce it? Uh, is it solar? Is it wind? Is it wind? Wind? Yes, okay. wind farm in Bullion. At, Bal at Bullion. Sorry. Okay, thank yeah. you. So we'll pass to our third speaker, Olivier Ticos of Alca Torda, who's going to present to us um, the work that Alca Torda is doing and a particular study on hydrogen. So over to you, Olivier. Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Olivier Ticos, CEO of Alca Torda Application. Alcatoda is quite an old company now, 20 years uh, existence on uh, hydrogen uh, studies. We, create, we are now in a van uh, and uh, we start uh, to, to put a system on board a, a ship in uh, 2002. Uh, on the Panek 3. And uh, after we have made, um, uh, this is a record. Um, we have made a, a, a ship with uh, the ICAM, it's an engineering school in Nantes. Uh, we have made a moustache, it was a, a small uh, boat, a small craft uh, with a, a hydrogen and fuel cell system. And also, uh, I work uh, on, uh, for Symbio, uh, the one of fuel cell maker in France, uh, one of the first. And uh, we we did uh, the the Navibus uh, for the uh, Nantes uh, Transportation Organization, and uh, some of my engineers, uh, Patrice Domange and Luc Arabier, I've done uh, also uh, all the hydrogen system on the race for water in 2016 with a uh, Swiss hydrogen. But now they are uh, with me in Alcatoda and they were uh, former uh, engineers in uh, Symbio SL. Thank you. 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 Th
we have uh, also studied more than 10 uh, uh, boats on uh, ships and uh, especially uh, uh, we start in uh, 2002 on a, a gill net and locker trap fishing boat. Uh, it was with uh, a good partnership with uh, CEA and um, also uh, Elion fuel cell at uh, this moment. And uh, also we have made a, a project with Symbio for the Bateau Mouche in Paris. It was a 40, 50, uh, 450 kilowatt uh, passenger ship on the Seine River. And uh, also uh, many projects uh, as Green Arbor, uh, Semex, uh, Pusher, and also Ilias, and I will uh, uh, present you now the uh, Ilias project. So uh, a project, a uh, hydrogen ship, is not a simple uh, project. We have to gather a lot of partners to try to succeed such uh, an experience. So uh, first, uh, you, have, you must have a, a very strong uh, a partner, and most of the times, this is uh, our uh, or regions or uh, agglomeration, like in Lorient or Van or uh, some like Brest, maybe one day, and uh, also the, uh, each time you must have the, in France the region with you, because it's. Uh, uh, hydrogen ships use so much hydrogen that it can structure your uh, industry uh, around this project. So we have a, we we deal a, a first uh, uh, contract with uh, Brittany to make a, a hydrogen uh, roadmap reflection on deployment of hydrogen and uh, carrying out uh, the technical and economic opportunities. Uh, is it uh, a good idea to make an hydrogen, strong hydrogen project on the territory? So the response was yes, and so the Brittany uh, uh, have uh, now uh, an hydro hydrogen roadmap. After we go, we have to study the, the system, and the system is not only the ship, but also all the uh, grounded system for hydrogen. Uh, as you say, uh, you must have a production of hydrogen, you must have a, a storage of hydrogen, distribution, transport of hydrogen. And then you can reach your port with hydrogen station and have boats to be uh, refueled uh, with this uh, hydrogen system. For the shift, after you must study a lot of things, and the basis of the studies are the operational uh, uses of the of the ship. You must have a, a good reading and analysis of the, the roads uh, and also the energy consumption. Then after you have to do the design, electric diagram, all is based on the electric diagram, uh, fuel cell system or generators, so you must couple your generators with your electric system and stem on the concept of uh, flow charts because you use uh, fluids uh, like uh, hydrogen, but waters, but also air, and uh, you must uh, have a good idea of the dimension on all the pipings and uh, equipment you must f uh, fit with that. Piping and instrumentation diagram on also all the high pressure storage and refueling, 
the Naval Architecture and Regulation Standards on Alternative Design Process, because for the moment there is no uh, construction rules uh, on uh, uh, classification societies, no flag regu uh, authorities regulation on hydrogen, and so we are always on pioneering the rules and standards to make such a shift. So, of course, you develop all your alternative design of all kinds of risk analysis and functional analysis, calculation, uh, all the definition of attack zones, ACID, ASOP, all the FMK uh, risk analysis you can do, and of course, make a financial analysis with a total cost of uh, ownership. And just to, oh, <laughs> just to, to, to show you, when we start to study Ilias, this ship you see go from Van Arbor then to uh, Ildars, uh, uh, we are the first focus on the power of 500 kilowatts. But all the analysis make us uh, minoring the power to 300 kilowatts and also to reduce uh, dramatically the hydrogen and electric consumption. So, of course, it makes you change your mind and say, well, on the first uh, draft, we were at one day refueling, but now we have uh, a refueling every three days or four days, depends of your uh, operational uses of the boat uh, between summer and winter. So you can see the general ar arrangement of the ship now, and the first design, and uh, it's where the rich challenge to store hydrogen on board with a such uh, low uh, draw. You know, 1.4 meter, it's very uh, small to, to have uh, this, uh, a good uh, volume between the, the keel and the main deck uh, and uh, have to put all your fuel cell and uh, hydrogen uh, uh, storage, complying with the risk analysis on the first uh, draft of rules of uh, classification society. But we succeed. Why doing uh, Ilias project on, moreover, uh, hydrogen ship? Because you, uh, you're diminuing your greenhouse gas emission. Let's say on a green hydrogen, you emit less than three, three kilograms of hydrogen uh, of a CO2 per hydrogen product. Also, you minoring all your sound emissions. Uh, there is a deep impact of sounds inside the uh, seawater and you impact uh, uh, very heavily all the fishes on the biophone of the uh, on sea. Also on uh, population health, you're diminishing all the emission due to gas oil. You know all of that. Huh? Uh, particles. Uh, carbons uh, also, and uh, it, uh, uh, um, uh, cove, uh, compound uh, 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 chemical system in the air that make you ill. Huh? And also, uh, all uh, you save energy, uh, we prove it, and uh, you, so you don't use carbon. You maintain and developing the local economy. Uh, there is a lot of studies around Ilias on the 
hydrogen ships on boats in Britain, in Brittany, because uh, that impacts your energy system, your future industry, and so your jobs. And of course, uh, hydrogen systems are uh, technological uh, sovereignty matters. That's all. So if you have some questions, we will welcome. Thank you very much. Um, I'm intrigued by how you resolved the issue. You showed us in the boat the challenge of uh, finding space for the fuel cells. Can you tell us a bit more about how you resolved that? Well, it's all uh, the, the parameters levels, technical parameter levels, you have to adjust between the safety, between the uh, the maintenance abilities you have around your systems with the volume you have and uh, also with the shape uh, of the ship and also it's always a bit uh, a fight with your architect because uh, you have to comply with some rules for stabilities and also so with the mass you have to carry so uh, always we made some uh, compromise but at the end we arrived to, to, to fit all our systems and to make it uh, more uh, uh, sober and uh, very efficient too um, and so what are the next steps for the project? <laughs> to, to add the order for the ship <laughs> that's all and uh, you, I, I spend more time to find money to do the projects than to make the project with engineer, you know. Uh, it's very rough here in, uh, in France to, to have, uh, to succeed in such a uh, project. Let's say, for example, we start Ilya's project at the same time as our partner and sometimes competitors in Europe. They have finished their project. Their ships are floating now and are agreed with all authorities. In France, we have not yet started to build it. That's finished. And if we have some, let's say, electrical industries that can couple their electrical systems with new uh, system like uh, fuel cells or, or so, your, comp your European competitors are ready because they are, uh, they are playing with uh, actors in north of Europe and uh, also uh, fuel cell uh, builders in north Europe and in France we are not still ready. We are still trying to finish our first fuel cell factory, for example. It's always very long to decide to put finance, to put money on project in France, and that's a very roof uh, barrier. If you could change something to make things go faster, what would you, what would you change? Oh, no, uh, it, it's, a, it's a system, it's mm -hmm. systemic, you know. When you have some like five to six level of decision with different partners, it's very hard to, yeah, there is always one who say, oh, that will never work. So it's finished, we have to, to come back and uh, refill and so on and so on. We it's won't get into a discussion on French bureaucracy. <laughs> uh, do we have any questions? What about maintenance in your studies? Uh, because you talk about uh, all advantages, uh, and I think there is also maybe a main advantages in terms of uh, maintenance all uh, lifelong of the ship uh, regarding the comparison to engines, propellers, these kind of things. When we have built the partnership with an industrial partner, the maintenance was uh, one of... Uh, main subject because when you are building such uh, object 
that must stand in the time after. And uh, of course, we we work hard on the how we can cope with maintenance and durability of the ship for tens or more years. Here, it's on sea, at sea, you know, the uses of the ship is uh, 10 to 20. But when you are working on uh, uh, waterway systems, uh, uh, the, uh, the boats are uh, remaining for some time, 50 years. So uh, you have to think about the maintenance and how you can uh, secure the maintenance even after the partnership. And it's all juridic. Sorry, uh, sir, so Sebastian Thomas, Entex uh, Martin Energy. Uh, I have a question for the storage and uh, the refuel uh, of the HD2 on uh, your vessel. What is your goal of uh, timeline to refill your, your vessel dur during one day? Um, because it is one hour, two hours. What is your, your goal of time for, for this refill of this uh, quantity? The less storage, <laughs> first, the less storage of hydrogen you have on board, the less time you spend to refill it. And uh, after, it's a te technology, of course, of your uh, storage tank that make uh, the time and also the dimensioning of the refueling station and its ability to deliver and temperature of the, uh, the fuels uh, to at the entrance of uh, the, the ship. So that's a lot of parameters. But uh, anyway, uh, we, we have a chance to spend less than half an hour to, to refuel such ship. Because this is the first, and I expect there is some other ship after. You don't have to stand all the day or all the night on the refueling station. There is some other ship to refuel after. So it's a bit, a bit like uh, the bus, uh, hydro hydrogen bus uh, refueling challenge is a bit the same thing. On, you see, it's about uh, the, the same hydrogen mass we have to put on board. So it's quite a, a good solution. Olivier, do you have, um, what is your vision about uh, H2, global H2 value chain in Bretagne? Do we have all the competencies here? I think, uh, and that's why we are in van now. <laughs> I think uh, because uh, I think the, the, the dynamism of this uh, uh, population and also uh, student uh, academics in uh, Brittany, we have uh, we're, we have start very light, uh, late the competition of hydrogen in Brittany. But in a few years, we have completely uh, shown us as uh, leaders, on, in, on particularly on uh, all the shipbuilding, and you see with uh, Yannick and CBS, and uh, also uh, now every shipyard in Brittany know that next step is hydrogen. Uh, there is a, a shipyard like Piriou. They are already building um, a dredger uh, with some fuel cells uh, generators on board. And the last studies for Brittany show us that all our uh, value chain on shipyards can reach at least one link of the value chain on hydrogen. And we must go like this because if we do now, now, we can be one of the leaders in Europe on hydrogen shipping system. Great, thank you. Um, we'll maybe pass to the round table and I'd like to ask the same question to, to Yannick and Adriel uh, on your views on the supply chain and the skills. And Olivia, if you want to come and take your seat back. Uh, so perhaps, uh, Adrien, I know you, you talked a little bit about the, um, 
the needs for training and the work that you're doing with different schools and universities, how do you see the, the competencies and the skills in the supply chain? Yes, um, the competencies for lorry agglomeration. So we need to um, to get some technicians' competencies and engineers' competencies on the territory. Uh, we will get some stations, so we need to maintain, uh, do the maintenance of uh, these stations. Uh, we will get some buses and ships, so uh, we will need competencies to to make this. Um, this uh, okay for the for the motorization on the hydrogen and uh, we need uh, also engineers competencies uh, for companies who are doing uh, research uh, on the hydrogen to make uh, an ecosystem and to think about uh, like uh, to, to think about a, a global ecosystem so we we already have uh, competencies on the territory we see some uh, uh, job creation on the territory about hydrogen. Uh, myself, for example, <laughs> I took the, this job uh, two, two months ago and uh, this is from uh, this uh, vision. Uh, so, uh, yes, this is on for Lorient Agglomeration. And are you seeing the interest for these jobs? Is there a lot of interest from people to, to get into the space? Yes, I think there is uh, interest and uh, we can see it for with um, our first uh, courses on uh, UBS uh, with this option uh, of uh, hydrogen. And uh, we are talking about hydrogen on the territory. We have some concrete projects on the territory. So... Uh, I think the interest is uh, is here you know, on the Lorient agglomération. Okay, great, thank you, Yannick. If you have any yeah. thoughts to add, uh, in fact, we we uh, Olivier speak about um, products. Uh, I will uh, just speak also um, around uh, people because we we are really looking at this time of uh, people who are able who are who can manage uh, such uh, new products. Uh, the integration, physical integration, I, I mean mechanicals and uh, welders, but also uh, the people who can manage to, to do physical interfaces and also functional, because um, we, we spoke about MATLAB a few, few, a few minutes ago, but uh, really it's, uh, for us it's, um, it's a, a new, new revolution because all the people in our shipyard will have to... Um, to, to change, to have new skills about uh, hydrogen. Um, uh, engineers, we have to manage uh, um, security studies because all, all the projects we, we have it now uh, recre um, needs to, to have security studies. It's new, um, everything is new. So um, I, I really agree with uh, Olivier when he says that Britain is um, it's a good place to uh, to do and to, to have a, a, a full supply chain in uh, uh, there and to be to be um, I guess a leader in uh, in uh, in Europe because uh, we are able to work together that's uh, that's uh, that's um, that's a big point in Britain. Yes, yeah, so that combination of the technology and the people, the, the people, skills. The people first. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Do you see the people, the skills as a bigger challenge than the technology? Do you think? Uh, yeah. Uh, when uh, when um, you have um, motivated people, you 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 can you can go to the moon. Mm. Okay, <laughs> that's correct. And um, to go to the moon, we need hydrogen too. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to to make an example from uh, UBS, uh, there is uh, twelve engineers now uh, uh, in the mechan mechatronic section. And we have uh, uh, hydrogen uh, courses on mechatronic system. They are uh, they are in the engineer school in uh, NCBS. And also uh, we recruit uh, two doctors on uh, hydrogen matters uh, with uh, Europe Technology and uh, Alcatorda. Uh, now uh, there is one doctor uh, and. Uh, one uh, master going to be a, a doctor uh, soon. Okay, thank you. Uh, perhaps a question for Olivia and Yannick. You've been in the hydrogen sector for a number of years or decades, perhaps. Uh, what sort of changes have you seen in that time? <laughs> I'm the oldest, that's why. <laughs> uh, 
Yes, uh, on 20 years uh, on hydrogen systems, uh, we start, uh, it was quite a laboratory system. Uh, uh, it's a lab fab. <laughs> and now we are in a real industry. For example, the membrane, <laughs> yeah, 20 years ago, we put some uh, um, polymer and we press uh, with a certain heat our electrode on it. Now it's a, it's a printed uh, polymer to, to do the, the membrane. Uh, uh, we start with graphite as uh, uh, plates, uh, bipolar plates, and now we have uh, stainless, uh, graphite, uh, a lot of things. And I think the next generation of fuel cell we will be uh, 3D uh, printed. So uh, it's also for storage. Everything has changed, in fact. Everything has changed. So you, you were all talking about the importance of the region, the local authorities, those different partnerships. What do you think makes a successful relationship between the public and the private sector, between the local authority and the, the technical companies? What makes that a success? I think people are waiting, in fact. They are not so afraid on uh, hydrogen. Uh, they are just waiting that uh, us to develop our uh, products. Uh, now it's products anyway. So uh, I think there is a good uh, uh, feeling on uh, this new technology anyway. Yeah, uh, f for me, it's um, the, the relation between private and uh, local authorities to, to get yeah. projects to have uh, uh, proof of concept, uh, not to go at sea, in fact. Uh, we, we, we have, uh, uh, we may, um, uh, it's good to, to have PowerPoint uh, slide and everything, but uh, the, the best way to, to, to improve this, uh, uh, this domain is to, to do small ships, to go at sea, to 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 have training on it uh, and maintenance. We 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 say the maintenance. It's uh, in every yeah. Well, it's, uh, it's a main sentence, but we we are, um, we need projects, real projects, uh, and after that uh, we will be able to uh, to scale the project. So. Uh, uh, all these small projects, as uh, we, we for us, is to share uh, our experiment, uh, our showstopper also, because uh, there is a lot of rules and regulation stopper at this time. But um, if we we have not this feed, feedback uh, um, from industrial uh, point of view, but also from uh, uh, for for local authority. They need to have feedback. Uh, uh, in, in, if not, uh, rules and regulation will be so hard that uh, uh, French shipyards were not able to 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 do uh, to do such project instead of uh, um, Northern Europe shipyard. Uh, so we, in fact, we we do um, the partnership is to 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 really do real products, <laughs> small products, but real one. And maybe from a local authority perspective? <laughs> yes, uh, just to complete, uh, yes, I, I, I think the success is uh, strong communication, transparency, and uh, uh, yes, a strong communication in every step of the project and uh, to, to involve uh, every authorities or every stakeholders in this uh, in the same way for the, for the project. Okay, thanks. Um, so we've mentioned the importance of the people and with motivated people, we can do anything. Uh, of course, we need the money to, to do it. Um, you talked a little bit differently about some of the different programs and the finance schemes. Uh, which are the mechanisms or the, the financial support that have allowed you to, to move forward the most? What, what are the, the key resources? Anyway, for, for that, we are under European rules and that's uh, normal, that's the standards. Uh, but it's very heavy to to do the studies without to be paid and to complete all the this is it steps of um, 
uh, of the files, uh, European files. And that takes times. And, uh, and the succeed is very uh, weak anyway, uh, less than uh, 30%. So uh, around 25%, uh, more sure. And we have, uh, and you must have a strong support of your uh, radio, regional team on this kind of project. And most of the time, if you want to 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 reach the uh, the financial head, you you must have uh, also a big uh, company with you. Otherwise, uh, there is no, Europe is not done for SME. For me, the main point is the um, France Relance Programme. Uh, it, it was a big step for us because we do um, projects. Um, two, of, uh, two of the five projects, they are financed by, by such France Relance. So it's, um, uh, we, we go deeply in the, in the project and we will have uh, uh, ships at sea in a few months. So, yeah, it's a good way to um, what you call the French bureaucracy, yes. So, but in fact, this one, uh, these two projects with France Relance will really simple. Uh, there is a need, there is a, a call for that. And, um, and uh, the, the best answer for uh, local partner or local authority uh, uh, makes that choice. And uh, we, go, we, go, we go fast for that. Any thoughts on the support mechanism? Yeah, yeah. Uh, for this project and this Michel, the agglomération is followed with uh, support with uh, region, Bretagne, Brittany region, and uh, ADEM, uh, and uh, Europe also. Yes, so it's really important to because uh, the, tar the target are important for the decarbonization and the plan is uh, for mobility, but also uh, for uh, for many uh, many parts of uh, the climate air energy plan. So the, the their support are really important for the Laurier agglomération. And we mentioned Europe a little bit there, and thinking about European partnerships and the the role of Europe. Um, are there any particular programs, particular countries, perhaps, that are of interest at the moment, thinking at a European scale? If you base on um, the International uh, Energy Agency, on the, uh, on the 30 uh, pro hydrogen ship projects in Europe, there is on uh, Norway, seven on uh, Netherlands, and then uh, three in Belgium, three in France. That's it. But they have a, a system with a Sintef, uh, very po powerful and performant. Yannick, you, were, you mentioned a few European projects that you're involved in? Yeah. Uh, yeah, we mentioned um, uh, European projects. It's for uh, uh, tidal turbine. Uh, we are um, we are in the uh, it's a Horizon project 2020. Uh, so it's uh, called uh, the Element project. Uh, it's to to make electricity with uh, tidal turbine. Um, we start <laughs> uh, six years ago. Um, a lot of papers to uh, to, fu to fill to fulfill and uh, uh, and um, now we are uh, in um, uh, we are in the, we do the job now but it takes so many time uh, for for a small company for a small shipyard so the the, the time lapse is so <laughs> so long <laughs> so yeah uh, uh, we. The region uh, uh, level uh, is for us uh, the best way to 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 succeed in such project. One final question before we ask for any audience questions: um, What research do you think is missing or is necessary? What do you see as the the key areas that we need to fund research in further? I, I will start with this question: uh, Research. Uh, 
it's not really research for me. Um, I, I guess that uh, Olivier will speak better than me for that. For, for me, it's um, French classification society. Uh, it's, classif it's a point of classification society. Uh, we we see that uh, the northern part of Europe have uh, um, a lot of advance in this uh, in this domain. So at this time we it's it's more easier to to go it's easier to use classification classification society from uh, north part of Europe than uh, than French one. Uh, For me, it's uh, the main part. Uh, when we design um, a new ship, we just need um, flag uh, rules and uh, regulation and rules from uh, classification society. It's um, it's uh, our main uh, main point for uh, for a naval architect. So uh, we we need to have um, uh, advanced classification society in France for this domain. Uh, and to have for that, we, we need projects. Um, but when we are in conf commercial project, we need to go fast. We need to go uh, with um, approved and uh, and uh, yes, uh, with a lot of feedback of classification society. Or oh, Olivier, did you have any points on the? Yes, uh, yes for research and academic uh, systems. So fuel cells and electrolyzer are um, electro, uh, electro uh, chemistry. So uh, in our uh, university, we have to higher the level on electrochemistry uh, for the moment, and also to couple the electro uh, chemistry with all the soft system because uh, fuel cells are soft on electrochemistry and uh, of course after but it's more new uh, all the the fluid uh, uh, physical system uh, of course uh, but that's a point here in Brittany we are quite strong with uh, all uh, uh, soft and uh, all the numeric system but We must higher our world level on the electrochemistry. Anyway, a couple more questions. And uh, you talked a little bit about some of the benefits for the region, thinking about job creation and the, the new industry. Are we starting to see that already? Do we think that those benefits are are starting to to appear? Yes, uh, there there will be <laughs> some benefits, but for the moment, we are speaking about. Uh, Projects. I mean, uh, at least uh, maybe five ships uh, in uh, the five next year, uh, maybe six. Uh, it's not yet uh, a real market, but anyway, you must have that in mind. That for the moment we're on the building of the market. Okay, uh, it's just the first park on the market. Till, I say, uh, uh, 2025. From 2025 to 2030, that will be the start. Okay? And at the moment, you will see a lot of industry going uh, on uh, showing our development they have made before for uh, trucks, lorries, vans. Uh, Also, all the tractors and uh, 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 some uh, uh, lot of things on mobilities anyway, uh, train also, railway uh, system. And also, uh, of course, but uh, all the stationary systems, storage of energy, uh, uh, enhancing the reliability and efficiency of uh, wind power for our sea power, for example. You need hydrogen to do that. You will see that from uh, uh, 2030 and uh, over. Uh, but uh, 
all will start uh, and, you, and be very uh, seen between 2025 and 2030. And so that, need, uh, that uh, uh, means that we, are, we must be ready now because after the market will be on and so we have just to run after, but it's not a good position. The benefits for the territory and perhaps the, the future, thinking forward to 2025, 2030? No, I think, like uh, Yannick tells us uh, just before, uh, concrete project will bring uh, other projects and uh, you you have to get some uh, proof of, com of uh, concept to involve uh, every, everyone. Uh, so um, it's, uh, like I, I said just before, it's, it's really global. Like uh, if you want some uh, ships, buses, cars, you have to build some stations, but to refuel the stations, you need to, to get some production. So uh, yes, I, I really think uh, on uh, territories, if you have some examples of uh, concrete uh, projects of uh, the creation of an uh, ecosystem, it will after, I think, deploy on the other uh, territory and region. And uh, like uh, Olivier said, uh, it will be uh, step by step uh, to uh, 2025, 2030. So, so yes, firstly, we need to have uh, some uh, concrete projects uh, to improve of concept to, to move on. Uh, I think we're, we're definitely getting the sense that we need that combination of the motivated people and that kind of, yeah, the, the will and the skills as well. Um, combine that with some concrete projects and go for it. <laughs> it's kind of the sense that I'm getting. Um, any closing remarks, uh, Olivier? Was your, any comments on the future of the supply chain, on the sector? Any closing comments? Unless we have a last chance for any questions. Yes, uh, I see you in... Uh in the room and uh, of course if you're interested in hydrogen it's a time to be uh, interested and uh, uh, it's uh, it's something uh, that uh, uh, well, make you uh, very interested in your job the, the hydrogen technology is very rich and uh, also very interesting. And it, uh, for me, it's a kind of passion, of course. Uh, but uh, so you are doing your job uh, w with a very interesting uh, manner of uh, living uh, with your technology. It's, that's hydrogen for me. For me, it's an industry, industrial revolution at this time. Uh, in in shipbuilding, we get um, during during the last uh, hundred years, we we had sailing from motor boats. It was the first one. We go to wood to steel boats. Uh, it was also um, industrial revolution, and a lot of shipyards closed just after the, this revolution. And now we have uh, a new revolution as to hydrogen uh, ships. It's, it's not. Um, it's not something. Uh, they will be hydrogen boats in the future. So uh, we we have uh, we have to go in this uh, in this uh, in this aim and um, uh, and uh, it's. It's hard. Uh, we have a lot of showstopper now, but uh, but it's very interesting. Uh, yes, um, I think the. The move is on, and uh, I'm also discovering this uh, this subject. Uh, I was not in this uh, one year ago, a few months ago. So uh, I'm discovering this subject with passion, and I see the the move uh, from Lorient agglomération, concrete uh, action from the region, and uh, I think it's um, it's um, um, yes, uh, it's a really important way to. To, to follow uh, and uh, this is uh, the key of, 
I think hydrogen is a is a key for many Christians, uh, like uh, rene renewable energy, storage, uh, mobility, free carbon mobility. So, yes, um, we will need some competencies, some strong competencies. So, uh, I encourage uh, people to to go in this way. Okay, thank you very much. Uh, so. Do feel free to speak to any of our speakers at the end of the session or to get in touch with them. Um, we did have a, a couple of other speakers that were on the programme that you may have seen. If you do wish to get in touch with them, then, then feel free to, to do so. Um, and just to be aware that Britain Développement Innovation has a number of events in the hydrogen space. So do take a note of the dates of the forthcoming events. The 17th of October in Pontivy, an online event in November uh, looking at hydrogen in Scotland. I'd encourage you to go to that because I myself am Scottish. Um, and an event in December uh, looking at the potential for hydrogen ships. So do take a note of those events and feel free to get in touch with Britain Development Innovation if you have any questions or need any more information on those events. Um, and for the rest of your day here, um, Britain Development Innovation has an event this afternoon on wind propulsion. Uh, so do feel free to join them this afternoon. Um, but otherwise, thank you very much for your attention. Uh, thank you to our three speakers. I think the, the message is clear. We have to go for it. We have to get motivated, build our projects, and uh, let's get it done. So thank you very much, everybody.